I've had a number of engineers come up to me and ask how they could excel, you know, in terms of supervising on site, how they could be confident on site, how they could make sure they were doing the right thing on site. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to share with you um, duties of a site engineer or a resident engineer when they are on site. This is a two part series. So in this first uh, uh, part, I'll share with you some of the some of the duties that I expected of you to do when you are a site engineer or a resident engineer. I hope this video will help you uh, scale up, will help you be more confident and be clear on what is expected of you on during site supervision. Enjoy. Welcome back to the second part of um, the duties of the resident engineer. I hope you found the first part um, helpful, um, that at least you felt more confident in um, your site work. And I hope the second part will actually make you more confident so that by the end of this series, you will be more knowledgeable on what is really expected of you. Uh, this is the final part. And uh, the first duty in this second segment is, um, as the engineer, you need to make sure that, make sure that the client communicates with the contractor through the engineer. You know, sometimes these things really happen, really happen uh, without anyone noticing. It's not that they're out to leave the engineer out. It's just that maybe they meet the contractor somewhere and they just start talking and giving instructions. So what that does is it now brings confusion. You find the contractor is doing something completely, you know, which you don't know about or you have not instructed them to do. And uh, you actually out there now with this angry face instructing him to stop and is telling you, oh, the client say that I should add this or I should do it, this extra work. And you're like, I didn't know anything about it. So if something like that happens, uh, just make sure you talk to the client, to, you know, bring out the fact that um, it's bringing confusion on the site and that makes it difficult for you to monitor and supervise the contractor if you're not aware of what they exactly they expect to do and, and what the client expects the contractor to do, you know. So you will ask the client to say, okay, for the future, please can you communicate to me what you want done and then I'll be the one to communicate to the contractor to make sure um, I know what he's supposed to do and what I expect him to achieve at the end of the day. That way you avoid uh, confusion. And then uh, another thing is that uh, as the resident engineer, you will also, you also approve materials and equipment. equipment on site you know the type of sand you you have you've agreed to buy the cement the aggregates and um, you know the type of pumps size uh, capacity you know that you have agreed upon uh, all fittings you know exactly what you agreed upon so um, once the consignment is delivered it is your duty as the resident engineer to make sure uh, whatever materials or equipment are delivered on site meet the specifications as per the project and don't hesitate to reject anything if it doesn't meet the specifications otherwise at the end of the day you have poor quality work and it will all fall on you so what you don't like make sure you reject uh, uh, expired cement no they have to have the proper aggregate proper uh, uh, equipment and then you're good to go. So you also have your documentation that will show what has been approved. You fill in there, you sign both the contractor and, and uh, engineer approved. And uh, if you don't approve, you put it there, what you don't approve, what needs to be upgraded, and then that is that. 
then uh, you also need to proper filling off site records okay so proper is a proper filing proper filing of 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 site records you have your own filing so you make sure you have uh, file for letters to the contractor to the client incoming uh, uh, file for uh, minutes file for uh, uh, contract documents a file for uh, um, you know equipment you know specifications for equipment a file for drawings you know everything that you're doing on site you need to have it all filed such that uh, if you need to retrieve a certain document at some point, you exactly know what file you, you should go to and you get that quickly. And make sure also that your hard copies, you back them up also with uh, soft copies. You scan and then you back them up uh, with soft copies such that if anything happens, if for some reason the site office catches fire, you still have your records in place, you know, in soft copy. So it's always good to have a backup. And then uh, you also need to ensure the contractor submits their monthly report. Yeah, so the contractor does a monthly report which just uh, states what work he has done, um, what the hitches were, the delays, causes for the delays, what help he needs, uh, what payments he received, um, you know, a program of works compared to actual uh, progress on site, you know, things like that. So you have to make sure the contractor submits that on time, you go through it, and then um, you now submit it to the client. For, for their own information. And uh, besides the contractor's report, also as the engineer, you also come up with your own report for submission to the client. It depends on what has been agreed. It can be monthly, it can be quarterly. So it also depends on what has been agreed. But the engineer, you also come up with your own uh, monthly report or quarterly report, which you submit to the client. Then um, you also approve you approve drawings of works so the contractor can submit drawings to you of what they need to do and you have to approve those drawings to make sure that they now can become part of the construction drawings you know, so you need to stamp them and sign to make sure that the contractor can now use those drawings. It has been agreed that they use those drawings. It just saves you the headache. Sometimes the contractor wants to use a drawing that has not been approved. And if they bring it out, if your, your signature is not there, stamping is not there, we just tell them, you know, I don't know this drawing where you picked it up from. All my drawings are stamped. So it's your duty to make sure the drawings are stamped and the contractor is using those stamped drawings. And um, you're also supposed to record um, any works variations. Here I'm talking about sometimes let me look at the pipe. Sometimes maybe uh, the pipe was supposed to be buried, but now it has to be laid on top. So you need to know which chainage it is because it is now a, a variation from the construction drawing such that is when you come up now with the as built drawings you actually uh, now capture that variation if it is in terms of concrete works if you changed a design based because of the certain side conditions you need to capture that so that the uh, as built drawings actually uh, capture you know that that variation otherwise you're at risk of producing as built drawings which are similar to the construction drawings and yet that is not exactly what uh, was constructed out there because of one or two reasons so make sure as you go along you capture uh, any variations from the construction drawing such that your as built drawings will really reflect what was actually built 
then uh, measurement of works. Okay, measurement of completed works. Here, for me, the best thing is to just measure as you go. You know, it, it saves misunderstandings, it saves headache. Just measure as you go. Whatever is completed, you measure. And sometimes also there's that risk of now you have to be thinking, ah, by the way, because everything has now been backfilled. Did they put the cable from here to here or was it from there to there? You see? So as they go, measure the works, record uh, size, if it's a, a cable, if it's pipe, what was put in there, quantities, if it's a rock excavation, you measure it there, how, um, how much rock has been excavated, hardcore, things like that. Just measure as you go and make sure you have those records because um, those are the records that the contractor is going to use for claiming for you know for when they come up with their IPC. So you make sure you have proper records for measurement. And then uh, inspection, inspection of completed works. It's your duty to inspect, to make sure that the quality is as agreed. Um, it is exactly what you expected. You know, if you expected a cow, it's a cow that's there, you don't get a goat. So if you see a goat, you reject the goat and say, I expected you to come up with a cow. I need my cow. You see, so it's your duty to inspect and to sign off to say, okay, this works uh, as, uh, as they're great uh, specification and quality and they're good to go. And they are uh, serving the purpose as they were designed to do. So you see your duty as the engineer to inspect those completed works to make sure they comply with the project. And then money business, money, 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 processing of contractors, payment certificate. Yes, it's your duty to make sure you process that on time so that the contractor's cash flow is not affected. Process his payment on time. If the works have been done, process them is done and have the contractor paid for for his works. If uh, I know some, sometimes some, some contractors want to make you um, process for payment some works which they're saying, ah, by the end of the week, will have finished. For me, it's a no. Uh, um, if it's at the end of the week, if you want, then you delay their submission until the end of the week and you incorporate those works. I'm not signing in advance for any works which are not completed. So you make sure from your measurement certificates, you agree with the contractor, they submit their payment certificate, you process it, you check it, you sign, then you submit to the client for payment of the contractor. Otherwise, that brings to an end our series on resident engineer's duties. I hope you'll find this helpful. Um, I hope this will boost your confidence as you step out there on site and get the job done. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.